According to Startup Genome's report in 2017, 28 is the median age of an entrepreneur in Singapore. That makes our millennials the youngest in the world. More than 30% even did it while still in school. Alright, Deliveroo. Hello. Hi, I'm Joshua. Joshua said we'll get you changed into this. I hope you're ready to go deliver some orders. Two hours and three deliveries later, Sid finally reveals who he really is. I'm the I'm the general manager for Deliveroo Singapore. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you're the general manager of Deliveroo and you're out riding? What? It's, it's, it's something all of us do, including the founder of Deliveroo. When we went out riding in rain, we realized just how unsafe it can be. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, as a company, we have taken a lot of steps around uh, working closely with the government and uh, introducing rider insurance. So all riders in Singapore are, uh, are insured. Numbers don't tell you exactly how challenging it is. Mm -hmm. Numbers don't tell you if you're a first time rider uh, and if you don't know a location and if you have a certain delivery time, how that can add to your stress. We want people to be close to the ground. We want everyone to be willing to roll up their sleeves and, and, and understand what different departments are doing and understand what's really happening in the business. At the end of the day, if you are if you're sitting in an ivory tower, if you're distancing yourself from something, mm -hmm. you can't really, you need to get into the meat of the problem. You need to roll up your sleeves to be able to really figure out what's actually happening and actually solve it. Hi, I'm Joshua. Hi, Joshua. Oswald, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Yeah, welcome to Glynn's. Thank you. Here's my resume. Cool. Thanks. We don't actually look at a CV, but thanks for bringing it. You don't look at, you don't need my CV. Yeah, I'm a college dropout myself, so I just look at your real experience and your passion. Hi Joshua. Hi. Are you done? Yes, I'm done. Cool. I'll just walk you through this and what it means. It's just a distribution of the traits. You will see like you have very high emotional restraint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> high need for change. You like to try new things as you mentioned. Not the most organized, that's why you probably don't like the admin stuff. <laughs> and do the millennial entrepreneurs specifically look for millennial employees? <laughs> uh, I think that tends to be the case in terms of culture fit and all. So majority of our, of our 120 people are actually millennials right now. Mm -hmm. The secret of investments is you try to look out for the undervalued stocks, right? Mm -hmm. So the same thing for hiring candidates. If we look for very proven senior talent, uh, the market has really priced that experience in and they're very expensive, mm -hmm. right? But for a startup like us, we try to identify the undervalued stock Mm -hmm. which is the young talent who may not have the proven experience but have a lot of raw potential. So this product is called Talent Hunt. For example, this company, one of our clients, Tickopedia, they are looking for a software engineer. Mm -hmm. There's over 300,000 candidates in the platform. Wow. So that's a lot. Right? Yeah, it's huge. It's a lot of time, it's very time consuming to find this. Uh, what we have is an AI algorithm uh -huh. that quickly sifts through this 300,000 down to the top 20 based on the best fit with the company. And it also improves over time based on the different data that we collect. So why is using an algorithm better than human analysis. The main thing is the ability to sift through large amounts of data. So we have close to half a million candidates on Glynns now, mm -hmm. and if you just get someone to filter through, it's gonna take a lot of time. Can I offer you a chocolate pie? Oh yes, please, thank you. Let's just say there's an employee who's really nice, but constantly underperforming. So is it just a matter of, okay, out you go? If we were to make um, a trade-off between uh, results uh, versus effort, for example, um, we would uh, prioritise uh, results first, mm -hmm. followed by effort. But how do you quantify a, a, an employee's output? 
So ShopBack, we believe in data, using data to make decisions. Even for a soft role such as uh, human resources, mm. we actually measure the success of uh, human resource activities by regrettable turnover or the quality of hire. Is every decision that ShopBack makes with regards to the employees based on data? Yes, so that's the management style of uh, co-founders and our management team um, because we don't believe in subjectivity as much as possible. So what are the sort of changes that millennial leaders have brought to the workplace? I think there is a lot of um, challenging by peers and by their leaders, but yet a lot of trust that I trust in you that you can go out and do your thing. I think that organisations today need to know that uh, millennials are impatient. They're impatient to show the world that they can, they are able to, uh, but yet they also don't want to look bad. There's also ego at stake. Uh, so it is about leaders being very intentional, being very purposeful to creating different uh, stages, you know, different contexts where it is okay for them to try and it is okay for them to fail. You know, and as they begin to prove themselves, to grow that stage bigger for them.